just talked to my friend Bryant Spratlin. Uh, I love this guy. Thankful for him. Thankful for his friendship. Thankful for the way that he's helping um, expand the message through his skill sets. He, he actually does all of the reels and helps with some of the web development. A smart dude. Uh, uh, also profoundly uh, kind and wise. So we talked about his rethinking journey. Uh, call it deconstruction, call it repenting. Uh, it is a journey of discovering the goodness of God, discovering perfect love, discovering Jesus as perfect theology. Um, we talk about the king and the third option. Uh, the third option is union. It is uh, uh, God in Christ reconciling the world to himself. The third option is uh, Jesus saying to his disciples uh, when they ask who sinned, wrong question. The third option is, is uh, Bryant's through line, if you will. And this is a good conversation. And I, I told him, uh, we started off like, you know, with, um, you know, you turn the faucet on. Uh, and by the end of it, we had ourselves uh, a fire hose. Uh, got emotional a couple times. Bryant is a, is a man who understands relational theology, who understands the love of God in the context of family, understands humility and transformation. And so we, we dive into this third option, this paradigm of... Uh, it is very good. Um, an invitation to live in the ease uh, of union and, uh, and, uh, and to stay connected there. So anyway, I love this conversation. Thankful for him. We get into some tacos at the end. Um, yeah, a lot of life on this conversation and appreciate uh, Bryant for having it with me. <clears throat> Guys, uh, Rethinking God with Tacos Facebook group is growing. Um, thankful for all the kind ways in which we connect there and all the life and conversations taking place there. Our Instagram is also Rethinking God with Tacos, where Bryant's reels, he breaks down some of uh, some of these podcasts for us, uh, helps us uh, put them into sound bites, are available. And uh, we're also on, I think, some other social medias as well. I keep saying TikTok. I think it's happening. I think we are on there. Uh, you can sign up for our mailing list at afamilystory.org. You can also give there. We're listener supported and thankful when you partner with us that way. If you have an opportunity to join one of our Zooms, uh, Dale Howie hosts a Zoom a couple times a week, Thursdays and Fridays. You can learn more about it on our Facebook group. Uh, that's a good way to connect and community. You can keep up with some of the other Zoom calls that we do uh, through uh, familystory.org, through our mailing list. If you want to leave a review, you can do that on iTunes, Spotify, and uh, YouTube as well. I love doing this podcast. The conversations like the one I had today are revelatory for me and uh, I'm life-giving. And so I'm so very thankful for Bryant and and uh, everyone who's on the journey with us, I think you're going to enjoy this conversation I had about the third option with Brian Spratlin. We're officially recording. We're officially recording, man. It's good to see you, Brian. You too, it's, man. Uh, Brian Spratlin, man. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we're about to have this conversation. I met you, what, four years ago? Are we, are we four years old in our friendship? Um, well, I mean, we actually had our first conversation uh, right when you released God is Not in Control. So, Wow. So almost five years. Yeah, I think it was even longer than that, wasn't it? I think it was like 2018 okay. you released right. That, right? I forget, really? man. I forget how long they've been out. But yeah, yeah, at least five years, probably longer yeah. than that. Then you're right. Yeah. Um, and I remember that conversation. Uh, vaguely, but then we reconnected a few years ago, and then uh, and then I've gotten to know you over the last year uh, in, a, in a deeper way. And uh, thankful for you, man. I call you a friend. Like I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful for your wisdom. Grateful for your story. Grateful for your friendship. And uh, I, I uh, I'm thankful for all the ways that you uh, you've you've shared your expertise as well. Um, but dude, 
uh, when I when we talked about doing this, I, I I was really excited to to just do an hour where we just talked um, about the goodness of God together and how you got here. Share a little about yourself. Share a little bit about your story, uh, where you are right now, because it isn't where you were when I met you, and I'm sure yeah. that that'll be part of where we go. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I had, you know, kind of one of those moments where it's like, you know, I said the prayer when I was like five, um, right. and pretty much really meant it, uh, my whole life. And even in high school, like I was preaching and trying to, you know, get people quote unquote saved in high school. Um, like I didn't care that people thought I was weird. Like I was just going for it. And so, um, you know, I went to, I had like, you know, lots of free ride scholarships. to a lot of schools, but I decided to go to Bible college. Um, and it was actually in Bible college where I fell away from the Lord, uh, of all places. <laughs> um, so I, w- what, what I went to Rhema. ride for. Um, so I, I actually got into, could get into just about any school I wanted outside of Ivy League because of my test scores and stuff. Um, and so, so they had all given me scholarship. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you didn't say that part. You, you skipped smart. over the smart I'm part. Smart. You're, you're... Book smart, you know, book smart. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so you go to Rama. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I went to Rama, and that's where I actually more so fell away from the Lord for a few years. I, you know, in Bible college of all places. Um, yeah. But then I connected with a group and um, moved to Pensacola, Florida, to start a church, and um, became a pastor there. Was on staff um, doing young adult ministry, um, small group ministry. Um, a little bit of inner healing ministry. It was kind of a separate thing, but me and another guy used to travel and do that. Um, and then kind of started on the rethinking God journey. And um, that ended up kind of costing me some of those places of ministry. Um, yeah. And so that's when we reconnected even more, because I know you had that similar story of um, kind of having to leave a, a church. And um, so me and my wife, we picked up and moved back to her hometown, to uh, the middle of nowhere. So I see more cows on a day-to-day basis than I do people. Um, And we're in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, ministry looks like, yeah, and we're still in Florida. So we're in a little small town called Jasper, Florida. And ministry, for the most part, looks like to my seven-year-old and uh, four-year-old and my wife currently. That's that's what ministry consists of, really, in this season. Um, Can I? Uh, dude, I'll say this right off the bat, though. Um, boy, if we could, if we could reset uh, our understanding of ministry at that place, uh, I think yeah. we'd be a whole lot better off. You know, my dad um, early on had the call of God uh, and was the uh, was the guy that the church wanted to pastor, but he uh, he wasn't a good husband. Mm-hmm. He was absent. He was better at pastoring the people than he was his family, and. And thankfully, thankfully, my mom was feisty enough to 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 let him know <laughs> that this wasn't going to yeah. pass. And thankfully, my dad was wise enough and humble enough to step aside from some of the ego stroking, even uh, opportunities that he had at the time to be the the man and go find a, a way by which to serve his family. So, dude, like yesterday, men to uh, your ministry. Yeah. But, yeah. It's great. It's actually yeah. your book that got me here. You know, it's, that's where part of it yeah. started. You know, it's your book got me here. <laughs> well, I was going to say, cause the first time we talked, you were reading God is not in control. And I guess it, it landed, but I remember like almost, I did, didn't at one point, did I apologize to you? <laughs> uh, yeah. When we were first talking, like, I'm sorry that you're going through all this, uh, you know, <laughs> whenever the kind of the, the separation from the, kind of current ministry role yeah, had to yeah. change. Yeah. It, but it was, it was the book, but, uh, but I mean, you were already nav- walking down that road. Um, and, and I know that uh, you were, you were part of a church. So, so we're laughing, but it was, I know it was painful. Uh, oh, yeah. I know uh, that season was, was tough. And, you know, we talked a little bit, that was really when I was getting to know you uh, the first few conversations, but that's why I was apologizing. Cause, cause, uh, uh, God is not in control resonated in ways that wasn't helping, um, folks connect with you. That's maybe a nice way of saying it, but, yeah. uh, so you said something before we got on about how you, 
how you process, how you learn. And yeah. you, you preached a message at your church that reminded me of how you process, like you were coming into something, you preached the king of the third option. And uh, I think this was uh, probably the, what got you in trouble too, right? Yeah. Well, you know, is that, that was the start of it got me in trouble. I think your book gave me language for things that in my heart I knew was true, but had not um, ever been given permission to go there. And so, yeah. and that's why I think theology and storytelling, no matter, because people are going to learn different ways. Like I learned better from le reading a book on theology than I necessarily do story, but not everybody's right. like that. And so it's yeah. like, I think that's so important for the words that we say and that we write are to help give language and give permission for someone to even go after something that their heart agrees with that they've never even thought was possible, right. you know, and, and that did that. Um, and then that led me to really preach this, you know, the, I, like we were talking before we got on, like, it's almost like a lot of the big breakthrough moments in my life have happened because I was asking the Lord what to teach on. And I feel like I get a revelation and then I teach it. And as I'm teaching it, I'm like, Oh, that was really good. I definitely did not come up with that. I need to, and then it makes me kind of, you know, rethink deeper. Some things and dig in deeper. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's what that, that did for me. Um, and I don't know if you want me to kind of talk about the, yeah, like, man. even what that yeah. message is about, but um, you know, it, it, it stemmed from the, the woman caught in adultery and, you know, it seems like that Jesus is given two options. It's either stone the woman and no longer be a friend of sinners, um, or he has to um, say that, like, not stone her and then be looked at as a false teacher. And so, right. but instead, he's this brilliant, uh, full of wisdom and comes up with a third option. And, third option. you know, the third <laughs> option is, you know, he without sin cast the first stone while, you yeah. know, while he was disqualifying everyone else to throw a stone, he was actually uniquely qualifying himself to pick one up and throw it as a sinless person yeah. and chose not to. And so it's this, to me, it began to just go down this journey of like, okay, I've always been an out of the box thinker um, already. Um but I'd forgotten a lot of times that there was this third option, a way of looking at things, because it's so easy to get trapped in this back and forth dualistic yeah. thing. Um, you know, we yeah. live in this, this, you know, this dynamic of this either or type of uh, yeah. world. And um, it's almost like I don't, you probably remember this or have heard this, but um, the whole breakdown of like justice, mercy and grace. And it's like your dad comes home. And, you know, you've done something wrong. And if he comes in and spanks you, that's justice because you're getting what you deserve. But if he comes right. home and lets you off the hook, then that's mercy. And you didn't get what right. you deserve. You but instead, you, right. you know, and then grace would be him coming home and rewarding you for your punishment. Right. He can't um, get far. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, to me, that that kind of creates almost like not even just a dualistic good cop, bad cop. It actually creates to me like an unholy trinity of like, and I think what it's done is it's allowed people to get stuck in, okay, I, I don't, we've got all this crap teaching about total depravity and all this stuff that it's like, I'll just settle for mercy. Um, if I can right. just have mercy, then I'll be good. And we never even pursue the grace of what actually was paid for on the cross to walk in, um, which is what I think actually changes the cosmos is when we can walk in the grace of who we are yeah. and then we begin to love the way that he loved and, you know, not, not be right. this dualistic, you know, God is wrath or is God love. And it's like, no, there's a third yeah. option and it's that God's yeah. wrath is his love. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's Bro. what's kind of started that journey for me of rethinking everything and yeah. trying to find when I feel trapped in this, it's either this way or this way. There is a third option here. Um, yeah. If I'll yeah. if I'll put my ear to the pavement and listen to the whisper of Holy Spirit, like it'll be illuminated. Oh. And we need the third option in so many, so many ways. To me, the third option in that story, it, it's literally a, a paradigm shift. It's an invitation to step away from the knowledge of good and evil and into the it is very good uh, original design of what we were. Yeah. You know, you're right. It was a trap question. 
and and for Jesus to answer the question would be to participate in that dualistic thinking. It would have been to participate in in a retributive perspective uh, uh, on who God is. And so that third option, bro, is, I mean, for me, that story is, uh, the way that I, I got to interpret that story was through being convinced that God is good. And, and so I think the third option is actually found in, in, in that conviction that he's good as Jesus reveals. And I won't deviate to the left or to the right. He doesn't participate in punishment. And uh, he's not looking away at the cross. And so for me, the, the way by which I found the third option is, is through the day in, day out uh, revelation, conviction of the goodness of God being revealed in Christ, where, where suddenly, because to me, this is what's happening, right? Um, uh, the woman's caught, of course, you know, you know, now we can talk about the culture of the day and the fact that there wasn't a fellow with her and yeah. there's so much so much brokenness there so much uh, even culturally that's broken but law says that uh, she could be stoned and and so they try to trap jesus with it and and he says man I, i'm not going to participate in that paradigm and, and I, I think a lot of folks know that paradigm because as i think even this deconstruction movement right now is because uh we are being faced with that that trap question all the time and it's always sin counting it's always focused on sin and so that you know you've got folks who are like hey i can't throw a rock anymore at this particular center and uh, but i don't know about the third option so if there's only two options and i can't throw a rock at the center then i actually have to create some sort of subculture to support this this uh, and we'll actually we'll develop a culture to support this broken system and this brokenness and we'll normalize it and so on and so forth and Jesus is like, yeah, I'm not going to participate in that. This is actually something way bigger. Uh, I, I'm preaching on it now, so I don't need to do that. But uh, for me, that third option is the invitation into grace. It's the invitation yeah. into the grace that you're talking about that's basically like, hey, you know, he's without sin can cast the first stone. So that's that's the brilliant third option. Jesus has got revelation of a different paradigm that traps everybody, and they all have to drop the stones. They, and then the most profound thing, where are your accusers? how you deal with sin is, is you remove shame and condemnation. It's like, yeah. where are your accused? Yeah, they're not here. Okay. Now we can talk about go and sin no more. Now we can talk about who you truly are. Here's the third option. I like it, but, um, it didn't go over. I don't think it went over. Yeah. Well, it didn't go over once I began because see, I'm that type of person that once I see one thing is truth, I have to follow it to its complete end. Like it's not enough to just, yeah. you know, it's not enough to, you know, rethink penal substitutionary atonement and not play that out. It's not to me. It's I can't just sit there. And, okay. God didn't pour out wrath on Jesus. That's amazing. <laughs> I have to be like, well, right. if he didn't yeah. pour out wrath, then what does that mean about this? And then what yeah. does that mean about this? And what does that mean about this? Yeah. And ultimately yeah. I think the thing that got me in trouble is I had to take it to it's all the way to the end and which leads you to like, what is the purpose of hell? And, you know, is right. hell right. torment and eternal or is hell um, redemptive and restorative? And if everything yeah. that God does has to be redemptive, then I have to see hell as in some way, even if I can't understand it, redemptive. Um, yeah. And then that to me makes all the mental gymnastics that you have to do with Old Testament and New Testament, like, you know, um, knowing that, that that through line, that God is good, no matter what, that there's not a trace of darkness in him, just allows me, yeah. it's no more gymnastics of, well, how do I account yeah. for God doesn't change, yeah. but he looks different in the Old Testament. It's like, no, there's a yeah. there's a, a through line all the way through that, um, like, is his goodness. And if I don't understand a particular story, then that that's where it goes back to that third option. Did, you know, yeah. was it? What is that third? I even see that in like the life of uh, Ruth. You know, if you read that story, like Moses tells them uh, in Deuteronomy that for 10 generations, a Moabite is not allowed in the promised land because of the way they treated you. Like this is a commandment from the Lord. No Moabite yeah. for 10 generations. But here, two generations yeah. later, we get Ruth coming in to the promised land who's <laughs> becoming the grandmother of, you know, David. Uh, yeah. which is the lineage of Jesus. And so yeah. it's, that's the third yeah. option in the story is if you see it connected, it's like, 
you know, that's, it's not God didn't want them in and or God was going to let them in. Um, you know, it's this this beautiful third creative way of including people that the religious people of the day felt should be excluded. Um, yeah. And so I think I think it's ultimately where I landed on uh, eternal conscious torment that got me in the most trouble. That was kind of the <laughs> straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I um, I've always been a little stubborn, uh, and so if you're going to be stubborn, just be stubborn in the right direction, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I got saved at five, just like you. I had encounters with Jesus. He was my best friend at five. I mean, you know that I got all kinds of separation theology along the way. I didn't fall away at Bible college. What Bible college did for me was it made me convinced I wasn't called to ministry. I was no way I could make that suit fit. So which was unfortunate seeing as that was the purpose of Bible college to prepare me for ministry. Yeah. Um, so I grew up knowing the love of God, experiencing his goodness, having encounters, and they all came with the love of God. And, and, uh, and yet in my thirties, when Bill Johnson said the phrase, Jesus is perfect theology, it was offensively good and so simple. Yeah. And, and I was at the point where, uh, desperation was uh, how I navigated every aspect of my relationship with God. It wasn't happening when he'd meet with me. I just kept bringing it to the table because it was all I knew. And um, Jesus's perfect theology and and the desperation of of um, my, my experiences and some things that hadn't worked led me to uh, be a dog on a bone, right? Because I was like, look, at if God is always good and Jesus is what God has to say about himself, then he never leaves or forsakes. Like, this has got to be the truth. But there's this one time where the father looks away. Like, I had just been raised with the yeah. belief that he can't look upon sin. And, you know, so he has to look away from Jesus at the cross. And, and I remember when I discovered Psalm 22 and the, the prophetic act that was happening and the fact that Jesus was quoting this Davidic psalm that's prophetic in nature walks you through finally coming to the conclusion of in my day of trouble he did not turn his face from me i remember when i saw that the writing was on the wall that eventually i would i would break down a punitive understanding of hell like it was there yeah. that i would i would rethink evangelism i would rethink you know, because everything up till that point was built on the foundation of separation yeah. And that was the last thing that removed. There is no separation in the Godhead. There is no separation between him and myself. And if that is true, then he truly is good. And now I can trust him in all things. And then like the dog on a bone, um, that led me down lots of roads. And and finally to you, was I a year or two ahead? Had we been kicked out at that point when we talked? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you had been. Yeah, I think you had been kicked out a couple of years ahead of me. Yeah. So I was able to go, dude, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with a smile on my face, but but not because it was funny, but because it was over the same subject. Um, yeah. I, dude, you said the wrath of God. You described the wrath of God in a way that I'd love you to break down um, if you if you can, if you're comfortable yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that was the subject, right? The, yeah. The, yeah. It's, you know, it's this, it's like, we we always have to feel like this need to balance God. Um, like I even saw this thing like floating around the other day on social media, like, yes, God is love, but God is absolutely holy. And it's this, yes, but. you can, God's love, but he's absolutely holy. And I'm like, man, to, to, to even subtly like transpose holiness above love as if they could be separated. Um, or, you know, like, yeah. yes, God, God is merciful, but he's also a judge. And instead yeah. it's like, no, like, does God judge? Of course. But just like any yeah. judge in our courts today, s sometimes judges can render a verdict of mercy. And that's how I yeah. see whenever I have to think, if I ever have to think in a legal sense, and I ever find myself falling back into this trap of, you know, God in a courtroom, which I think it's so easy to do versus a family, yeah. I have to remember, yeah. no, 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 no. Even in this moment where my heart feels he's a judge, his judgments are always mercy. And his wrath yeah. is his love. It's like if my kids are believing something that is a lie about me or about my wife or about the father, about Jesus, 
then my yeah. wrath looks like coming against everything that is in the way that's preventing them from understanding love. Like I 100% yeah. have wrath towards them and it's wrath towards the lie that they've believed that I'm not Come good on. or that God's not good. And, you know, I had this amazing encounter with my daughter when she was four and it really changed my perspective on the Lord. Um, she was yeah. angry at me and it's because she had believed a lie about me. And it was something I absolutely had not done. Like, I don't know where she wow. got it from completely fabricated. And mm -hmm. I, I know that I didn't come up with this on my own, but I didn't catch the revelation of it till after. But I remember getting below her. So like getting on my knees and going even lower than her eye level and looking in her eyes and just apologizing for how I wow. hurt her. And I wow. knew I'd done nothing wrong, but I knew yeah. that's what was needed in that moment to reestablish heart connection. And then Come from on, there, man. we could talk about the issue that was wrong. And I'm like, if I would do that as a father, Come on. then why would I not think God would do that? And so I see that all throughout even scripture, my own life, like, like God stooping even below us to lock eyes with us to be like, yeah. I am really sorry for how I hurt you in this and this and this, even knowing that he's not the one that did it, but knowing that even in the admission that he did do it in that moment can reestablish that heart connection so that now I can actually hear the truth of the matter. But until that, that connection is restored, I can't even hear the truth of the matter. And so, and I think sometimes maybe that's how we've gotten some bad theology throughout um, our lives and in the church is because God has stooped and said something and then we, we never reconnected. And instead we just took what we heard and then built a doctrine around it or a teaching around it instead of letting that bring us back to heart connection where we could actually hear the truth that no, 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 I never did that. Like that was not who I am for you to even think yeah. that I would do that is only a lie from the enemy. And you don't need to believe yeah. that. And, and now instead we've kind of built all these doctrines, I think, and you know, maybe that's not how I'm sure, you know, there's a, whether you're not, but you believe in Satan or the enemy and I'm sure it comes in all kinds of ways, but that's just what I think about like, man, how much bad theology has come in because like the Lord stooped and told us something that we then just broke connection with and never followed back up to here. Um, yeah. And I'll tell you, you know, a little bit of a rabbit trail. This, this changed my life reading scripture. Um, and I had to take a break from scripture for a while as I was kind of relearning some things, but the noticing the tone of voice that I would read of Jesus and the gospels in my own head um, made such a profound impact. So I think of like Jesus with the woman at the well, it's like, how do I, you know, how do I actually hear? And sometimes you're reading it's monotone, but it's like, no, let me actually think, how did Jesus say this? You know, was yeah. it like, what are you talking about woman? You've had five husbands, you know, the man you're living with <laughs> now is not your husband. It's like, it's that tone or it's like this broken weepy voice of like, yeah. I'm so sorry. You're so broken. And that began to, wow. you know, that's that whole thing kind of broke down. Like when I'm hearing something that feels wrathful, that feels judgmental um, from God, it's okay. It's either something broken in me that's filtering his voice through that. Um, or I'm hearing something that's not him. And uh, I, I threw out, uh, and I taught people this for years on how to hear God's voice of, you know, if you, if what you're hearing does not bring the fruit of the spirit, then throw it out. Um, and God is so good that if it is him, he'll keep telling you. And he, if he knows the only way you're going to hear it is through the fruit of the spirit, then he'll make you feel one of the fruits of the spirit to get it through. That's good. I, he's, he's really, really, he's maybe the best communicator that's ever been. So yeah, uh, he, he's pretty good at that. I love the relational stories. Obviously that got me emotional. Um, because I, that's the father. That's, that's, he, he gets low and he doesn't, uh, he doesn't have an ego. He doesn't have to, yeah. you know, you don't have to jump through hoops in your confusion. You know, I, I've had these conversations with my son who thinks very black and white, you know, especially in the 13, 14, 15, he would have a hard time with apologizing if he hadn't done anything wrong. Yeah. And I was like, no, no, we're not apologizing for some moral failing. We're, we're, we're reconnecting. We're humbling ourselves. We're we're walking and stepping inside uh, what 
I would like to suggest is the third option. Like yeah. you took the third option with your daughter. It's it's the third option uh, of Jesus' humanity and with the man um, who's born blind. And yeah. uh, the disciples want want to know cause and effect. And he says, no, there's a third option. No, there's another paradigm. Yeah. No, yeah. it's not about this. It is, this is, let me reveal the third option. I am the third option. This is, we, this relationship is the third option. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love the, the family stories. Um, I remember my daughter, I, we went, uh, doom bugging like a, like, I don't know if you call it a doom buggy, but it was one of those really nice. We had a friend and he took us out on these trails and mud and he just driving mm -hmm. through the, we, we hit a puddle. We got stuck and she's in the back and I'm trying to get us out. And I did not know. And I gun it. And, uh, I look back and I'm, a, I'm like, like a hundred gallons of mud water. <laughs> it's just all, she was livid. I mean, she was probably seven. I mean, we got pictures now. I'll, I'll pull up the picture every once in a while and we'll, it'll show up and I'll start laughing. And she's like, it's not funny. Like even now. <laughs> But I had to do the same thing. I was like, oh, baby, I'm so... She thought I'd somehow done it on purpose. And I'm laughing, trying to pretend that it's all good. Uh, yes. And I finally had to go, oh, honey, I am so sorry. Your dad just did the, messed it all up. And, but uh, uh, you reminded me of that story. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, you have to share the picture now on the, you know, with the with the tacos right? community. Yeah. Yeah, you know, know. It's, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's hilarious. Because she's... Yeah, she's got this face like she's. I'm just standing there trying to like it's all good <laughs> yeah. next to the buggy. <laughs> I have to put yeah. it up. It's pretty. You, it's pretty you, funny. That, that, but, uh, it's so hard to live that life like that, though. You yeah. know, like you know, especially as your kids get older, like it's hard to not slip into that. Just like I'm right, you're wrong, like that. Right. Either or type, right. you know, dualistic side. It's like if you want to commit to like. Yeah. And I said, when I first had my daughter, I said that that's when it really, that's actually probably what started my shift is I remember just looking at her laying in the crib and I'm like, now I understand what it means, yeah. how the father loves to at least a small measure. Like I have to choose yeah. to love my wife, choose to love my neighbor. I don't have to choose to love this thing in front of me. Like it's just there. Um, yeah. And it's like, yeah. I resolved then. I said, Lord, I only want to parent the way you would parent. Like, just yeah. teach me. And that, you know, that involves yeah. things that are challenging when you start. And, you know, that mean that I always get it right or that I even have the right way that God would parent. But that, to me, took punishment off the table. And, yeah. you know, and sometimes it's like, man, it would just be so easy just to punish you to teach you a lesson. And it's, it's so hard to, yeah. I think stay in that place. And that's where I think it really goes back to walking in the grace that we're called to walk in. Because if I, if I struggle to do that with my kids, then I'm definitely going to struggle to do it with my neighbor, you know? Right. And then I'm really right. going to struggle to do it with my enemy and, um, <laughs> you know, to really love my enemy, you know, the way that I'm called to. And like, yeah. you know, it's hard. It's not easy. Hey guys, interrupt him for a second. Glad you're here. So thankful for this podcast. Thankful to get to do this with friends. Thankful for Derek and all of those who've navigated it with us. Listen, this podcast is done under our nonprofit, A Family Story. 12 years ago, I had a vision and I wrote it down. I'm going to read it to you. Family Story is a relational community of creatives, family and friends. I see all of us as creatives. We do life together. We envision and express God's love through our gifting and grace. We are worshipers, dreamers, storytellers, and preachers, a family of dads and moms, brothers and sisters, daughters and sons, united by a passion to know and reveal God's perfect love. I feel like I'm seeing the fulfillment of some of that vision 12 years ago. Uh, the mandate on A Family Story was to create media content catalytic for an encounter with the love of God. AfamilyStory.org is our website. I encourage you to go there. There's a whole lot of media content there. There's books and articles. Uh, there's films, some music, and uh, this podcast. That's the home of 
Rethinking God with Tacos, which is pretty dang cool. It's been life-giving, as I said, the community around it, the community of creatives, of family and friends that's growing. Uh, it's blown me away. And so I'm thankful. I'm thankful uh, for all the relationships, connections, and I'm thankful for all those who've given. Rethinking God with Tacos is listener-supported. If you'd like to support us, you can go to afamilystory.org. Uh, again, we're a nonprofit. And I would encourage you to join us on our Facebook group. Uh, follow us on Instagram, all the socials. Uh, if you're curious how to find me on the socials, it's at Jason Clark is. Otherwise, like, share, uh, write a review on iTunes or Spotify. Uh, tell your mom. We really are loving doing this, and I'm so thankful for everyone here. All right. It's time to get back to the podcast. There's this part of me that wants to, to live in this, this simple place where it is easy, like where there's a grace. Yeah. Um, and, and for, so it's, it's the, um, what I believe about who he is, you know, will determine everything about how I believe about who I am, how I interact with you and how I interact with my kids and, you know, because for my kids, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm teaching you obedience. Yeah, I'm teaching you principles, but more I'm speaking to your identity. Like, yeah. I want to be the guy that says, this is who you really are. Like, you're not, you know, I've told the story many times, but, you know, my daughter gets caught in a lie. My goal is that she'd understand the consequences of lying. Sure, that, but only because the consequences of lying is that it, it cuts you off from trust. It cuts you off from connection. It trusts you off from, from, uh, a, from being able to live a holistic life but but ultimately uh, i'm not focused on the consequences of lying as much as i am focused on who you really are like you're not a liar like yeah you're created as a truth teller yeah. and, and so then you've got you've got access to an identity that behavior follows behind and and then i do think there's an ease like there is an ease there's the, an the thing ease when you stay in it it's when you stay yes, in connection when you're in, con yes, when you it. stay connected, that, that's a, it, that's let me clear, I don't mean it. I mean, it's hard. It's not hard to stay in it. It's hard to make yeah. sure you stay connected because when you're connected, yes. it's easy. It's so yes. easy. Um, and that's that, we've trained our kids. I'm actually very thankful that the Lord had me rethink, deconstruct, whatever word you want, while my kids sure. were still so young, because yeah. I can see people in this journey that, you know, rethought God when their kids were seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, and yeah. seeing some of that, yeah. that struggle there in their kids. And it's like my daughter now is like going back to what you're talking about. Like when there's it's not about necessarily teaching her, like, don't lie because of where like the consequences and things like right, that. Right. Like we've instilled sure. in her like now when she lies and she gets caught, you know, getting a piece of candy, you know. You know, having that extra sure, chocolate sure. milk when she wasn't supposed to, she's like, I know, Spratlins don't do that. And it's because we <laughs> told her, like, like that's so, it's so, it's like I don't even have to tell her now. I'm like, baby, you know, you know why we don't do that. She's like, Yeah, Spratlins yeah. don't do that. And I'm a Spratlin. And, you know, it's like she's now in school now. She's in first grade and she's in public school, you know. So, you know, she's picking up all kinds of things that, you know, six, seven year old uh is not ready for. And she comes home and, you know, she asked me about it. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, some people don't have their mommies and daddies to teach them the right way. And she's like, oh, but we're Spratlins. We don't do that, right? And I'm like, yes, you're getting it. You're getting it. So I'm <laughs> thankful to, you know, have, you know, the Lord to have walked me through that before, you know, my kids were old. Well, I think, and I think we're seeing that on a larger scale the awakening that's taking place right now to who we truly are, to our union, uh, to this, to this invitation into, um, living connected. Like, what does it look like to live connected today? Like for me, th there was the, there was that huge, that season, that radical shift. And then there was this, an, an, an encounter and a conversation with my father that really invited me into uh, the third option. I mean, really what, I prayed a prayer that was a third option prayer. It was, yeah. I'm no longer going to interact with you based on my 
finite thinking on my desperations, you know, desperation was the high watermark of spiritual maturity for me, right? So I'm no longer going to interact with you based on my lack. I'm going to get actually get off that road that doesn't even, it doesn't take me anywhere. And I, that's that rich young ruler road that, you yeah. know, I've done it all. What am I still lacking? Right. It's like, it, it doesn't yeah. even add up. Like you've done everything and concludes with, with the final conclusion. What am I still lacking? But, but the third option of stepping into um, this uh, living from staying yeah. connected. Uh, the practice that I, that I did during that season was, uh, you know, in the morning I would say, father, show me who you are convinced that he was he was revealed perfectly in jesus and he's always yeah. good so show me who you are everything you know you're the father where everything you have is mine where it's already finished everything's concluded in you i'm living from your pleasure you're the father who's well pleased with me so i would start my day with father who show me who you are and then then show me how you see me it would you know i'm a spratland right like yeah. show me how you see i am a, your beloved i am i'm in the family I'm yeah. your favorite, as John says. I'm the one that you love, right? Like, yeah. like, how do I live there in that in that connection? And and now, show me how you see the world. Now, let's take on the day. Now, and and that was where I learned what I'm talking about with the ease to stay connected. That was a uh, when when I first prayed that prayer, I would pray it a hundred times a day, uh, and uh, until it became more even an internalized reality that was a consistent almost like you're praying in the spirit in that way not that yeah. i live there all the time yeah but well i had a similar thing happen like i got to me i got my theology right first but it had not changed yeah. the way that i was relating to one another which that's the problem yeah like i can have all the best thoughts about god but if i'm not if it's not impacting yeah. this relational connection then it's just yeah. dung you know right. and right. it was actually during the height of covid uh, like, uh, you know, COVID, you know, March 2020, and it was around December. Like I had really kind of gone, I didn't realize it, but into a dark place of like, you know, I'm kind of anti-establishment. Anyway, you tell me something to do, like I'm going to buck against it. You know, it's like my wife knows that about me. If she wants me to do something, don't tell me to do it. You know, make me think it's my idea. That, you know, I'm working on it. Uh, but I remember we were- You heard, we heard it as it came out of your mouth. You're like, no, no, yeah. I'm working on it. I'm working yeah. on it. <laughs> We we were visiting my in-laws, which is actually where we live now on this property. Um, yeah. But this yeah. we were at Christmas, and you know I've got two young kids, and um, I just been able to start walking again from a bad car accident, and somehow there was going to be like this hour and a half window where I was all alone. My kids were napping, you know, and I'm like I'm going to just go read a book, and you know for people maybe in the charismatic movement, you know that's Pentecostal, they'll understand what I'm about to say, but. I had just this feeling that the Lord wanted to encounter me and it's like, yeah. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm just, yeah. you know, we're out in the middle of nowhere. I hop on, you know, the Kubota and drive it out to the middle of the field. This is actually where we got married. Like I can see the tree that we got married under. Um, and so I don't okay. know, I just went to that spot and That's cool. I felt like I, my life had just got filleted in that moment. Like, I'm like the, uh, not a harsh rebuke, but a rebuke so much that I, it, it changed the very fiber of my being. And it was all around like how I'm treating, like you think you've got good theology, but look how you're treating. You refuse to wear a mask and you're like when other wow. people are actually in fear, like who are yeah. you? Like, yeah, you are not yeah. operating like a son of God. Like you are not operate. You are not oh. acting as a Stratlin right now. And so right. <laughs> and I, I I, I told my wife for years, I've said, like, that's the day I got saved because that was Bro. the day that it actually changed. And I mean, it was Come like, on. you know, a, even like three months later, my wife's like, you're not the same person anymore. Come and on. like, that's where the theology began to meet that thing. And so to me, yeah. that that prayer that kind of came out in that moment was actually, are you awake? Like, that's what I felt yeah. like the Lord was saying to me. Are you awake? to this present moment where I want to invite you to encounter my love so that you can invite others to encounter my love in their interaction with you. And, and that moment really changed everything. And that's, I think, you know, I would have always ended up probably where I'm at and getting kicked out of somewhere, but that accelerated it because that's where it changed how I'm going to react to 
Um, yeah. You know, how I'm going to encounter people in the LGBTQ community, how I'm going to encounter yeah. people in fear and um, all these things. And it changed everything. Um, and so I actually had Bro. my wife had it made for me on my wall. I've got a big 24 by 36 thing that just says, are you awake? And it sits right behind my computer in my office. So any moment I can just look at it and be like, oh yeah, there's connection right here if I want it. There it is. So there, and then you step back into the ease yeah. of, and the grace of, of this connection, this communion. It's natural. It's certainly easier to get on the floor with your daughter and, yeah. and get low. Um, to put a mask on is the same thing. Yeah. For me, uh, when you find that love is a circle, right? We grew up in dualism. We grew up in hierarchy. I've used this analogy before, but I, I, I love the, 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 the uh, Jesus said, the last shall be first, the first shall be last. And, uh, I love to use that to define love as a circle. If you think in the context of gain and hierarchy and dualism and separation, then you'll get dizzy trying to be first. But if love is a circle, then you realize that love is other centered, self-giving and, uh, and, and it looks like what, what's it look, what's, what's needed in this moment. Do I need to put a mask on in this moment? Yeah. Do I need to, or you know, what's going to serve in this moment? Do I need to, um, speak uh, regarding my convictions around our original design. I might have some particular convictions around this. No, there's no love is the long game. No. Yeah. What does it look like to lay my life down in this room? What does it look like to, to love whoever's in the room in the capacity of, of my heavenly father? I mean, bro, that's the ease. That's the thing that, that, that I'm fascinated by that. I'm like, like, it's the it's there's a liberty in that too right because yeah. once upon a time you had to you know you you weren't wearing the mask because and you know i don't know if this is um <laughs> controversial or not but you could make an argument anyway that the mask wasn't necessary but the mask wasn't the point yeah the point was what does love look like in this moment yeah oh great i hope i just didn't get us kicked out of something else man yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's why I would love these people, the people that are deconstructing, like, you know, when we're in the religious system, you know, it's, it's my enemy is the world, per se. Um, and then I feel like, though, when this deconstruction movement, the thing that concerns me with it is that now it's almost like we've moved to the side where it's easy to love the world and it's yeah. difficult to lay down my life and love the religious, the system yeah. that I came out of. Sure. And yeah. like, that's where it's like, I'm now not... like, I've just traded places though. I still have an enemy that's yeah. hard to love. And yeah, I may be on the side of the, the, the side that, you know, um, it looks like Jesus was on because he loved the world and is always attacking the Pharisees. Um, but, but to me, it's like, we've just shifted our enemy and now, and so it's like, yeah. I want to make sure that it's easy to love back those people yes. that hurt me yeah. on the religious side of things and not, and yeah. be able to stay in that ease of connection of, you know, and, and that's, it looks different because when I'm loving the world, you know, maybe, or, you know, especially going back to the COVID thing, I'm just putting on the mask for somebody in fear. But sure. when I walk into a room full of, you know, second amendment, gun toting Southern Christian Republicans, yeah. then love looks like taking the mask off. Right. Yeah. You know, come on, man. It's, like, it, it's taking it. And so that's, you know, and I'll tell you the thing that helped me the most um, is I read this book by Greg Boyd about like how powerful your imagination is um, in imaginary prayer um, and like engaging your imagination in prayer. And anytime now that I'm struggling and the only two people I really seem to struggle to love is that religious institution that I, can't, like the people so, that are still so, hounding that PSA. Yeah, and, so, so when you hear Jesus talking to the Pharisee, you hear brood of vipers. Exactly. That's the thing. And then, so it's like, but no, like his no. heart was for them too. And so this, yeah. this imaginary thing that I do, I, you know, I've got this massive recliner. My feet don't even touch the ground. I'm six one. So it's a massive recliner um, that uh, my in-laws bought for me after I broke my hip. And I, I go and I imagine myself sitting in that chair 
and I imagine Jesus coming and washing my feet, telling me how much he loves me. And then I hear him say, would you do the same? And then I Come take on. his place and I put that person that I'm struggling to love in my chair and I wash their feet. And um, I've ne- now sometimes it may take me an hour to move from my chair down to my knees to wash their feet. But I've never gotten up from that moment and still struggled to connect in love with the person that I hated. Um, and you know, I even Come feel on. like I have to do that now with some of these, you know, different celebrity ministers, you know, or things that like they have a huge following and they post something on social media and I get angry. I'm like, okay, no, no, no. Let me take them to my chair and wash their feet. Um, And that, that to me allows me now to connect with the other side that I came from. Um, You know, I don't, I don't want to be the younger brother that goes into the house and uh, is glad that the older brother stays out because I never liked him anyway, you know? Yeah. It's like no, no. I want, I want, I want, Everyone. I want my older brother in too. Yeah, everyone's in the party, man. That, yeah. Let's see. I, I, I have this saying. Uh, every, I, every once in a while, I think I've said on the podcast. But uh, if there's anyone that that's caused me to have to, I use the phrase, I need to go braid a whip. Yeah. And, uh, it's that's that's me going. Oh man, I'm getting I'm getting a little hot, and it almost always happens uh, with those um, uh, with the folks that are speaking in the name of God, uh, in ways that, uh, I'm pretty sure he doesn't speak, but, um, uh, preaching that separation, uh, yeah. that's when I pretty much, I, I, I get upset and I, I need to go braid a whip. But the point I'm making is what you're talking about. Um, I, 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 I've, I, I hear Jesus speaking every word he speaks. I hear, I hear, in the tone of father forgive them they know not what they do so for me every word that comes out of jesus mouth finds its conclusion its beginning its end in god in christ reconciling the world to himself jesus on a cross saying father forgive them they know not what they do into your hands i commit my spirit so so for me the tone in jesus's voice and 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 the the motive that you would you would connect to every one of his actions is discovered in those in that phrase they don't know what they're doing father it's a, yeah. you know uh, you're asking the wrong question he said to his disciples when they want to know who sinned you're asking the wrong question they don't know what they're doing and uh forgive them i'm going to step inside this delusion i'm going to set them free from it every one of them yeah. is included in that prayer and and so that's what you're talking about even even in the flipping of tables because i've been fascinated by that that whole event and but the idea that justice then right because we talked about it earlier like justice has to be balanced if if love isn't the foundation if god in christ reconciling the world to himself isn't the foundation if father forgive them they know not what they do isn't the foundation of our gospel then justice has to be balanced and holiness careful we need to balance holiness with instead of love defines that love defines all things and so now jesus can even flip tables that's a, a just act but he's doing it in the spirit of love. He's literally yeah. laying his life down for the person on the other side of the table. And that to me is, it all comes down to this. Cause you talked through line at the beginning. I, I love that, 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 um, that language, the, what's the through line. When I sit with a, with an author and I ask him about a book and you're going to tell us about your book soon. <laughs> yeah. when I sit with an author and I, uh, I ask him about a book. The first thing I'll ask is what's your through line? What's the, what's the thing? What's the one sentence, the two sentences for me, trust, it's all trust. Everything comes down to, um, you know, even, you know, his goodness is connected to, to Jesus. Jesus has revealed that he is trustworthy because he'll lay his life down for his friend. Everything's built in that. It's the through line of, of life here on earth is that we would find a way to trust one another. And I can trust someone who will wash feet. I, I, yeah. you know, who will get low and apologize when they didn't do anything who will wear the mask because i'm un, i'm insecure in that moment and not wear the mask because i'm i'm uh, pretty confident and you know you know what i'm saying that that, yeah. that that's the love i can trust other centered yeah. self-giving yeah. beautiful you got me preaching man yeah you got me <laughs> preaching you know i don't get to, you know I don't get to do that that often you know <laughs> not anymore we're uh, you and I are going to go hang out 
uh, in a in a month or so, uh, couple months, couple months, and uh, I'm gonna have a whole lot of these conversations, whether they're taped or not. We'll see. But yeah, uh, these are my favorite things, man. I I love these conversations. Me too. Because to I me, love, it's I love it's. You know, it's almost like I like I appreciate the, you know, the Paul Young and the Baxter story. Like Paul wrote this incredible book and didn't even have all the theology to it. And my heart's the opposite. Like it's like I want to see the theology set right. But then how yeah. do we bridge that to, you know, to transforming our neighborhoods? Yeah. Because uh, it's yeah. any good to have good theology yeah. that's not transforming. Um, it, at that point, it's just yeah. theology. It's not the gospel. And like yeah. so that's. That's what I'm looking forward to, like where these conversations stimulate transformation. Yeah. Well, because good theology is practical in that it, it is, it will be, it will, it has hands and feet. It, it It's a yeah. very human, uh, it, it, it's very human. Good theology is very human because it's going to require uh, us. It's going to require being transformed and then loving in, in transformative ways. Uh, I, I love the Baxter a Paul story too, because um, I, I I love that that um, well I love all the ways that we learn. So as a as a communicator and as a writer, and I've I've helped people write their memoirs. You know, one of the things you you, you have to learn how they learn, and and then you 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 learn from them. So I love that aspect of it. I love that Paul um, discovered because for me my journey is probably similar to Paul, not necessarily experiences. But but that I knew here that I I'd been figuring out how to steward a burning that I'm a relational uh, thinker in that respect. So are you. But 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 that I was stewarding something here that I knew was true, and then I had to go out and get the language for it. Uh, and 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 I'm so thankful for the Baxters and the Jerzaks who don't just give you the language; they give you the historical context. They'll take you back to the early church. They'll walk you through how we stepped away from some of these foundational truths that Jesus revealed. And, and, uh, I feel like we're on, in a, we're in a space where right now experience and language and, and, uh, and, and learning are, are merging and there is an awakening. There is, yeah. we are. What's the, what's the, what's the poster or the, uh, what is the sign? What is the phrase on your wall? Oh, um, are you awake? Are you awake? Yeah. I think I think we're in a season where are you awake? Where there's that that's the question. Where yeah. where there is a, a yes and amen. Um, and uh, I'm going back to that ease. Um, yeah. When I say ease, I'm basically saying it's not complicated. He loves us. Yeah. Yeah. And we've complicated it. We've uh, yeah. we've got all these hoops and all these yeah. lines and all these so ways by which he. Yeah. So but, many yeah, buts. But, yeah. Yeah, but so many buts. Oh, there's no buts. It's just good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's even the, you know, one that I think that common thing I always hear, well, how do you know that your goodness, like what if God's goodness looks different than yours and that your, your whole foundation is off because you think you understand what good looks like? Um, yeah. You know, yeah. and it's like, well, yeah. because I'm made in his image. So if we can't, if I can't, yeah. if whenever I'm, whenever I'm operating, as a child of God, if I don't understand goodness, then I can't be made in his image. And I think you can come back to the fruits, fruits of the spirit. I mean, we can get yeah. a real good sense of, you know, uh, the goodness of God. I think we innately know, uh, we yeah. know what love is. And, um, I, 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 before we move on. Yeah. Well, I'm the, there you go. You set me up. Just, go ahead. No, you go ahead. It's, 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 it's scary. It's scary. Cause you don't know, you know, people don't want to be wrong. No. And, and, and by the way, that gives you a lot of grace for the journey you were on in which you're rethinking, uh, hell. Yeah. And, and you can appreciate that, that, uh, that's scary. That is a scary thing. Um, uh, and, uh, and so with that, I was going to come back and say, you know, uh, where did you land there? Well, I landed that, um, you know, I for a long time, I tried to actually balance it. I like the way that Brad Jersak used to balance it back in the day, hopeful. where he called he he yep. lang language it a hopeful inclusionist. But if you hear a lot of yep. the stuff today, he'll say I was just more saying that out of 
almost fear of committing to something. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I I fully landed on I and I to me I'm a very big language person. So like I like to me language is so important, and I don't want to identify with words that have so much negative connotation to it. So I wouldn't use a word maybe like universalist because it, whenever I right. say universalist, yeah. so many people think so many different things. So yeah. where I landed was apocastasis. It's the restoration of all things. Do I know what that looks like? No, but I know it looks like restoration. Uh, how it looks, <laughs> what it looks like, the timing of what it looks like. I don't have any idea, but I know yeah. that if everything God does is redemptive and restorative, then there has to be restoration for everything. Um, and to me, that journey was actually very quick. Like once I felt like I sought that question, like I was settled within about 30 days, um, you know, okay. but my wife was not, it took her years of yeah. journeying that out and processing it out. Yeah. And that's why I'm so thankful for her on the journey, because I remember when we were going through all that hard stuff, you know, and disconnecting from, our community because of yeah. at that yeah. point, what only I believed. And she made this thing, this profound saying to me. And she said, even if you're driving us off a cliff, I'll stay buckled up next to you. And <laughs> that actually gave me the freedom to just all the way go there. Um, wow. Because I knew that she was never going to leave. And what she didn't even know is that in that moment, she's thinking she's being a good wife, but she's actually being Jesus. And yeah. it's like, no, I will wow. never leave you. Even when you go yeah. off, I'm not leaving. Yeah. Um, wow. And so, yeah, so that's where I wow. landed. I just, I landed in the restoration of all things and, you know, but if you're I, not there, that doesn't, I, that's okay too. It's like, let's just center I, back well, around on love. The, the wonderful thing, if you've landed there is that if you're not there, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's the easiest thing to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause I believe in the restoration of all things. Yeah. Um, my wife, uh, I would say that she got there before me. I love that story. I would say she got there before me, but that I, she, she didn't need any language around it for her. Um, family has always been how we would navigate the nature of God. And so, duh, um, yeah. if we're his kids, it'll all be fine. You know, she, she, yeah. she didn't, she doesn't, she's so in some ways she probably helped lead me uh, only because she would have um, more grace for, for a, a perspective that would, would I'd have to wrestle with, um, you know, whether it was, uh, you name some of the, the touch points that uh, have hit the church over the last 15 years. But, um, but yeah, I was the dog on the bone that had to, I had to find a, G, a father who didn't look away and I had to, and, uh, and then once that, that happened, um, years ago, we were, we were in the front days of this podcast. I would have used Brad Jerzak's statement, a hopeful inclusionist too. Um, you know, for me, I'd just gotten kicked out of a church. So, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I was doing my best to find language that, that, uh, made room for everyone at the table. Um, but I, I, I invited a guest on the podcast real smart fella, theologian. And he emailed me, said, Hey, I, I'd, I'd be honored to come on the podcast, but you do know that I'm not an ultimate reconciliationist. Well, up until that point, I, um, I didn't know what that was. So I actually had to go, that's how I'm wired, right? I literally had to go Google ultimate reconciliationist because what he was saying was, I know you're an ultimate reconciliationist and he's smart enough that I was like, Oh, if he thinks I am, I should probably go look up yeah. what this means. <laughs> I looked up what it meant. And I was like, well, how about that? I guess I know what I am. So uh, that was that was when for me, I was like, okay, let's go investigate this a little more, find a better language around it. And I, I like apocastasis. And um, and I, I like the liberty and the grace afforded me uh, to navigate uh, every road from that foundation because it does it does allow me to love to me in the most authentic ways. So, yeah. um, I think, I think you're onto something is what I'm saying, you know? Yeah. It's been a great journey. I wouldn't anyway, trade it. Dude. I wouldn't trade it. Um, yeah. and yeah. the beauty of Jesus that even though we had all that pain and the disconnection from community, that yeah. the main source of that pain 
there's been reconciliation and yeah, there's been a coming back to the table that we yeah. we can come to the table as family. We may not can do ministry together because we have different ideas of what ministry looks like and, you know, sure. um, foundational belief. I mean, I could do ministry with anybody, but not everybody could do ministry with me. Um, uh, but That's, but yeah. there's we're, we can come back to the table and have a meal. Um, so there's, you know, and I know that can't be everybody's story, but I'm thankful that it, it can be ours. Yeah, I, I am too. I'm thankful because we have that phrase, family is the long game. And uh, when I when I say it, I'm hopeful that it happens in my lifetime, but I'm 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 not just speaking to that. I, I'm speaking to the long game of love that is before and after uh, this this brief window of time that I'm here. Um, but I do think, again, if you've got if you've got the views that we're we're leaning into, um, even there, I think there's a restoration taking place. Um, yeah. Uh, that that uh, that whether you discover it, you know, in the next years or or on the other side, you know, um, yeah. I think it's I think it's a beautiful thing. And the same with us. We've got, you know, we've got some some folks that that uh, I'm, I feel the same way. I, I'm like, yeah, I, I could do ministry with with anyone. Yeah. But uh, that's that's not always how others feel about about yeah. me. So, bro. Um, this is, this is it, man. This is it. This is, this is the best stuff right here. Just talking with my friend, breaking down the love of God. Um, I was hearing stories I didn't know. I'm looking forward to getting to hear more stories in the next couple of months, but, but, uh, I love, uh, what you shared about, um, I'd say the phrase again, um, awaken. Yeah. Are you awake? Are you awake? Are you awake? I love that. Yeah. And it really stems from like, this is the only moment that I can actually feel the love of God is in my present moment right now. Like, yeah, because that's the only moment that I'm alive in, you know, like, and it's just like, am I awake to that present love reality right now? Come on. Uh, that's it. Are, are you awake? Um, so we haven't duck tacos and that's, you know, you know, the drill guys, just so you know, uh, uh, um, Bryant has been helping me, um, with some of the technical stuff. He's, he's, um, brilliant in that area and helping me put together reels. So I'm curious while we were talking, if you were like, okay, that I just said that that's going to be the sound bite. <laughs> you know, I, I actually thought about that before and I'm like, gosh, that'd be so hard to edit your own self. You know, talk for real. You know, it's like all the other guests. I can usually find ten to fifteen. Maybe I find one or two, and it's just you talking. You know. Well, I thought when I was doing it, I was like, "Oh my gosh, I don't want to hear." It. Uh, I, it was hard to do myself too, so I totally get it. But I was laughing at one point. You said something like, "Oh, that's a real right there." You said something I was like, "Oh, that's it right there." <laughs> yeah, I'm saying it. I'm not pulling out later. <laughs> it's awesome though, and I'm I'm grateful. Um, Everybody in this community, man, uh, we're grateful too. Even if those if, if folks don't know who you are, you've been a um, a, a great source of encouragement uh, to us as well over these years, and um, and helpful uh, in so many practical ways as we've figured out how to how to do this thing called rethinking God with tacos. And and um, so thankful for you, bro. But the taco story, uh, you got one. You, yeah. You know, I, I never really liked tacos. I just always ate burritos, you know. Um, I was missing out my whole life. Um, and I remember I was actually in Dallas, Texas, and we were doing a, um inner healing, teaching people out here the God's voice conference, me and a ministry partner. And this local pastor is like, I'm going to take you all to lunch. And he just drove, and we drove and drove. And we went to a different part of town um, where there was this little bitty taco stand. And there's this you know, old lady outside, you know, shucking corn and like, um, and he's like, you know, what do you want? And I was like, well, I, I want a burrito. He's like, they don't have burritos. All they have is tacos. And I'm like, okay, well, they have flour tortillas. And he's like, no, they don't have flour tortillas. And I was like, well, I don't want this. Um, and I'm like, okay, I just give me a chorizo taco. That's fine. And when he got it, it was the best thing I've ever put in my mouth. And that was in 20, 18 and I've been on a taco kick ever since. And I eat tacos at least once a week, if not twice a week. 
and it's always the same. I always try to find just a chorizo taco on a corn tortilla with onion and cilantro and put some hot sauce on it, and that's all I want. You try to recapture that moment, that perfect yes. moment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I have recaptured it a few times. So I love I love that your taco story is a, a rethinking, repenting taco story. Yeah, it is, you know. It is. I rethought <laughs> tacos. You know, it was very <laughs> apropos. And I love I you 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 and my son are probably similar. You get along. Uh, my son can be. He's like you know. He likes what he likes. He's kind of stubborn. And and we took him. Uh, for my wife and I, our anniversary is the day after his birthday. Yeah. And so we, we went out for our anniversary. He hadn't, he had had something happen, but he hadn't yet. So we were like, why don't you come with us? But we're going to, to have tacos. And he was stubborn. And, uh, and I made him like, a, like, like, um, like, a, like God is not in control. But that day, Jason was like, I'm going <laughs> to flex a little bit. I know that you like steak. I know that you like these shells. I know that you like cheese. So I got him and I, and I made, and he complained. I mean, he was so obnoxious. He complained and then he ate it. And then, and then, uh, he was like, by the end of the meal, he looked at me and he was like, he didn't want to admit that he liked it, yeah. but it was like, he was like, yeah, that was pretty good. And then the next week he's like, you guys want to get tacos? And it's like his favorite place now. So every once in yeah. a while, I'm like, I like to just be like, dude, like sometimes you just need to be led. You got to be forced to, yeah. to, uh, uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Repent. You got to repent, yeah. son. You have you to repent, repent for not wanting to eat tacos, especially if you don't want to eat chorizo yeah. tacos. Those are the best. Come on. I do. I do chorizo. I do. I do two steak and one chorizo. Typically, if I'm going to get three, um, uh, and there's a couple places where I'd flip that because of their chorizo is good. Yeah. Uh, I'm in, man. I'm in. Uh, we'll do tacos in a couple months for sure. Hey, we'll no, do listen, there's minute. a great spot. Me, I've already, I already know a great spot. Uh, me and JD have went there, so we'll go there uh, in a couple Come months. We're together. Shout out to JD. Uh, at, uh, he's helping with some of what we're doing too. We're all going to be hanging out at a conference with Baxter and I, who else is there? Uh, this year's uh, it's John Crowder. Okay. All right. All right. I'll be good. I've actually it's going to be unique. The it's the first time they've ever had worship there with. Uh, Warren Sylvester is leading worship and he is, you know, you you don't know that is go find his stuff. I mean, he's even better in person. Um, but, uh, I've been to an event with him and it's just, you know, if you, if you want, if you're on this train and you struggle to find worship that fits this train of theology, Warren is your guy. So Warren is your guy. Yeah. Hey, I just learned something. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know who he is. So I'm, I'm excited to get to know him, you know, and, and normally this is where I would ask the guest uh, to, to share where they'd be found in their book and so on. And, and, and so, you know, you, you went out of your way to promote Warren, um, John Crowder, Baxter, but, you know, I know you've got this, this book you're working on. <laughs> no, I do not have, I do not have a book. I do have, I do have something I'm working on, but it is not, uh, it is nowhere near ready. I'm, I work too much for it to be close to being ready. I'm teasing him a little bit because he was joking about uh, 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 how he was going to put a book together for this call. But but um, I am now curious. I pushed enough to to find out you're working on something, which has got me curious. Yeah. But, uh, it's, it's actually yeah, just we... a long poem for my daughter. It's uh, about 10 Beautiful. pages of a poem. And it's it uh, it's uh, it's basically the same stanza over and over of something she did wrong something she did right or reverse something she did right something she did wrong with ended with my beloved daughter and whom I'm well pleased wow. like so no wow. matter no matter if you do it wrong or you do it right you're beloved and <laughs> I'm pleased with you so come so, on man you know maybe maybe it'll be come ready on. by the time she's you know getting ready to get married uh 50 years from now and then I'll give it to her <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got to talk about that. Uh, I love that. I think that I don't want to go off on another tangent. I, I, uh, I think the pleasure of our father is the, is the thing the church has been missing. Yeah. Uh, the significant transformative reality that when we get that, this is my son or my daughter. This is whom I love. Oh, I'm well pleased with him. Yeah. You know, to be some, I've really studied church history and revivals, especially, the last couple hundred years. And if you look back, you've never really seen a revival centered around the father's love. All you've had revivals of repentance. 
You've had the Jesus people movement. You've had Azusa and the outpouring of Holy Spirit, but you right. can't find one that was marked by a father who is well pleased with you. And so I just yeah. think, I think it's coming. Yeah. Well, I think, I think you've got that Toronto movement that touched on the father's love, but, but we lost, we, we didn't, you know, we, we missed the pleasure of our father. I think it came about the blessing, the Toronto blessing. Yeah. It came about how you yeah. could get something, not yeah. necessarily yeah. become something. Yeah. 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 I mean, there were some, some, there were some forerunners there like frost and, uh, that, 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 that revealed the love of the father, but, but the pleasure, like, but I think if you don't understand, it's attached to his pleasure that, yeah. and it's, it's, a, you know, I could go on a preach here. I won't, but Jesus got that well, pleased before he did. If, if we're going to wrap this all up and we talked about ministry on the front end, Jesus was a perfect ministry uh, minister. He was the high watermark of what ministry looks like for the entirety of his life. And for the first 30 years, he didn't do anything that we would call ministry. Yeah. All he did in those first 30 years and therefore we should probably redefine how we understand ministry but all he did in those first 30 years was uh become more convinced in his father's pleasure and his father's yeah. love and his identity as a son uh, and then the father publicly says uh what the what the son has been hearing uh intimately for years he publicly declares it and then the, then the son goes and does some stuff that we would call ministry but it's just the fruit of his union uh, i'm like I think what you're talking about that uh, uh, an awakening that's taking place is the discovery of our father's affection, his love, his pleasure. I think, I, I don't know, man, but that's another conversation probably, but yeah, but uh, uh, it gets me jazzed. I want to hear the poem. Yeah. I like it. One, one day, one yeah. day, one day. All right. All right, bro. Um, I, I know that you, uh, you are on social media, but uh, that's, uh, not something that you that's more something you do for a living yeah uh, i mean you can find me on social media. You, yeah. you just look up bryant spratlin i mean i i am the only bryant spratlin in the world so um it is hey. very easy to find me um so yeah you can totally find oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah 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 s-p-r-a-t-l-i-n yeah, you can find me you know online uh that way i mean it may take me a while to respond because i i don't get on social media all that often but i am on there yeah yeah Bro, I love you. I appreciate this conversation. I was looking forward to it for the last couple of weeks and uh, looking forward to, to hanging with you in, in a few weeks more. Um, this is good, bro. Um, uh, there's a whole lot of reels on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Well, I'll, you'll see what I deliver. <laughs> <laughs> love you, man. Love you, man. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, myself or our guests, you can go to afamilystory.org. You can also go to afamilystory.org if you'd like to give. This is a listener-supported podcast, and we are incredibly grateful for your generosity. Hey, we have a Facebook group, and it's pretty cool. Uh, Rethinking God with Tacos. You can join us over there. Lots of incredible conversation and community taking place on that page. And you can also follow us on all the socials, Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube, and others. Hey, I'd love it also if you uh, went on iTunes and left a review or shared or tweeted or liked the podcast. Uh, let your friends know that this is a good place to hear about the love of God. I pray grace and wonder over your day.